Y'all, I just took a scary stroll down memory lane and I cannot believe how chaotic my home used to be. I mean, there was stuff everywhere, bursting out of the cabinets, the drawers, so much so that the counters were cluttered, the floor was cluttered. My mind, I know, was cluttered at the time. Anyways, I have mostly gotten it under control now. After I posted my first clean with me style video and then realized you can't clean clutter and I had to start this decluttering journey, which I got inspiration from Marie Kondo and made my own lazier version of the KonMari method, which I dubbed the con my method. It worked out famously for me. If I had to do it all over again, I don't know if I could do it, but I'm glad I did it back then. Anyways, I refuse to let my house get like that again, so we got to continue this decluttering journey. Today, we are doing an extreme maintenance declutter. I am decluttering at least 100 items in today's video. You may be wondering, my, how do you still have so much crap? You know what? That's a good question. Something I gotta ask myself. However, I think there's a few things at play here. First off, when I started the decluttering journey, I was learning to let go of things. I was training my brain to be able to declutter. And when I looked back at some of those videos, while I did get rid of a lot of crap, if I was going into those projects with my current brain now, I would have gotten rid of so much more stuff. And I feel like I get better at letting go every single day, not only when it comes to decluttering stuff, but but uh, emotionally, I'm better at letting go of things too. But yes, I have learned how to let go of things more. And through that, when I revisit spaces, there's more that I realize I can declutter. The other piece of it is I spend probably 90% of my time in 50% of my house. But I was thinking about it last night as I was going to bed. There are definitely spaces in my home that I spend so little time, I don't even know what's in them. And so we're gonna discover that <laughs> together today and hopefully it's not too bad. But I need to stop talking and I need to get to decluttering. So let's start the extreme decluttering right now. Starting in the guest bathroom, it appears that someone ripped the towel bar off the wall and it's broken now. I mean, clearly it's broken now. I don't know where the other one of these is. I guess this is our first declutter. Does this count as one or two items? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start with the drawers. Right away, I mean, my kids are five and seven at this point. We don't need diapers. This shows how long it's been since I've gone through this drawer. We have diapers in here. Uh, last time my kids were in diapers was over two and a half years ago. Oh man, there's some butt paste all over here. Again, haven't had kids in diapers for a while. We don't need all this butt paste. Let's see, how many butt paste do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Ew, kind of hate this product. This temperature thermometer thing is an example of, I have bought this so many times. Do I recommend? Yes, but do I need three of them? No. You may be wondering what all these little night lights are for here. When we have guests come over, people have trouble obviously seeing through the house when it's dark at night. So I'll plug these night lights in all over the hallways so that people can not accidentally trip on someone's toy and die. <laughs> Next drawer, OMG! Why is there so much butt paste everywhere? Literally all that's in any of these freaking drawers it seems is tons of butt paste. I can't remember how many accounted from the others, but one, two, three, four, five, nine. There's like 10. And obviously I'm just trashing them, I'm not donating butt paste. All right, what could possibly be in here? If it'll open. More butt paste. This is crazy. All right, just out of curiosity, I really wanted to lay out and see just exactly how many <laughs> diaper creams I have, because I feel like it's a ridiculous amount that I pulled out. And you might be thinking that maybe off camera, I just showed the same ones in different cabinets. No, I really have a ridiculous amount and I'm very confused as to why. I mean, again, this goes back to at that time, I had so many 
things and items just bursting at the seams. What I am thinking probably happened is when I needed diaper cream, I didn't, it would get lost and I didn't know where to find it. And so I would just go buy more. Or if I was out and about with my kids and we didn't have diaper cream for whatever reason, I would just go to CVS and buy some if they needed it while we were out and about. And over time, it just accumulated to an insane amount of diaper cream. <laughs> How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, 13, 14. I feel like there was more. 14. I guess some of them were like prescription diaper creams. So non-prescription diaper creams, there were a lot. 31 items decluttered so far, let's keep going. Next up, we got, I can't even fully open this door, the random crap in this guest room closet. All right, let me let me try to show you. Turn on the light in here. Y you can't even see the floor. <laughs> There's just pillows and I don't know, all the stuff my kids have made forts with. Let's, let's see if we can get on in here. Couldn't open the door because this huge pregnancy pillow was in the way. I had no intentions on getting pregnant again. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I guess when I was like single and lonely, maybe, maybe this would have been nice to sleep with at night, but, but I'm not single and lonely anymore. <laughs> I know I've talked a little bit about the fact that I have a book. You know, this is cozy though. I am decluttering it, but I'm just gonna get my last hugs in with it while I tell you about this. Y'all know that I decluttered my husband. <laughs> Uh, over a year and a half ago at this point. I have a whole bunch of divorce videos if you want more details on that. My life is so different now in the best way possible. And I by no means want to promote divorce. I personally, growing up with a two-parent household that were married until my dad passed away, everyone in my family gets married and stays married. I truly believe in marriage and it still saddens me that I wasn't able to just get married once and stay married once and give that to my kids. However, I'm not going to promote unhealthy marriages and there is no marriage counselor on the planet who would have said that my marriage was a healthy marriage unless they were a sociopath. Anyways, all that to say, life update. My life is going really well now. I'm happier than ever. I feel like as I was looking back at those videos that showed what my house and my life looked like three or four years ago, so so much makes sense to me in hindsight. My life was so chaotic at that time and it was so clearly reflected in how my house looked. I was drowning, I was in survival mode. When my house was at peak mess, I had three kids under the age of two. I call myself a married single mom at the time because my ex was on business trips all the time. And I was working full time, coming home, doing the second shift of doing everything for everyone by myself. I didn't have a moment of free time. My only free time was the two seconds of existence and awareness before I fell asleep at, at night. And then I would wake up to someone crying and start the whole process over again. I honestly look back at those videos now of before I started the decluttering journey and I just feel bad for my younger self because I know what I was going through at that time. And I can remember seeing comments at that time of people being like, how could you let your house get like that? And you're not a good mom because how could you let your kids live like that? And I just feel bad for myself back then because I know I was a good mom. I know I was doing my best and I was just in survival mode living here in Texas without any family, without any village, without any help. Ugh, I don't... I honestly don't know how I did it. I feel like I'm such like a soft life person now. I don't think I could handle it now, but I somehow made it through back then and I am thankful for my younger self for getting me through that time so that I could live the life I'm living now because now life isn't so chaotic and that's why my house can look like this versus what it used to look like. So when people ask me, really, how did you get your house like this? Of course, it was the decluttering and cleaning, but in order to be able to do those things fully, my head needed to be in the right spot. And I had to put in the work to get my head into that spot, and I'm thankful for my younger self for doing that. And my battery's about to run out, so <laughs> let me change that real quick. All right, new battery, where was I? If you feel like your life is chaotic, your home looks chaotic, you don't know how these people have perfect 
Instagram homes, which I mean, clearly I just decluttered. I think, what was it, 13 or 14 diaper creams out of one bathroom. I definitely don't have an Instagram perfect home. There's hidden little weird things all over my home still as I work through it. But for all the people who asked me, how did I get my house from so much chaos to what it looks like now, which is just little bits of chaos because I do have ADHD. There will always be little bits of chaos. Really beyond the decluttering and having a cleaning schedule, the biggest thing is how just life changes as you grow up. My kids aren't little babies anymore. They're not helpless. They don't require a 1 billion percent of my attention. They're all three in grade school now. So while they're in school and I work from home, if I wanna take a work break and do some laundry, or clean up the kitchen because I went to bed too early and didn't clean the kitchen at night, I can take care of these maintenance things throughout the day while my kids are at school. I also, you know, I'm not taking care of an adult child anymore, which relieves so much workload. All that to say, if you are in the thick of it right now and you feel like you're drowning, you're in survival mode, give yourself some grace. Because if you are simply in survival mode right now, you're surviving and that really is your only job right now now. You will get your free time back as your kids grow up, as you make life choices. And if you put in the effort to make the cleaning schedules and decluttering schedules whenever you have time, it will get better. All right, but let's get back to decluttering so that my house doesn't turn into chaos again. And we are going to declutter this pregnancy pillow. This floor is covered with mattresses. I have these little Ikea mattresses that I am keeping because when my kids have sleepovers or we have our cousins over, I like to have these little beds for the extra kids. But all these excess pillows definitely don't need all these excess pillows, especially these dingy broken down ones here. Pretty much all these pillows can go. The fact that they're not on a bed and all the beds that require pillows, I mean, are on a bed. I'm I'm decluttering really all of these. I do really like these two Tempur-Pedic pillows. And so when I have guests come over that want to sleep on more than one pillow, you know, you got those double stacker people out there, I'll keep these for them. No one wants these feather pillows that have the little feather like pokey things sticking out of them that go through your pillowcase and like poke you in the eye. Some old curtains that go with nothing. Some of these can go. All right, we actually have, you know, some floor space we can walk on here. I'm decluttering one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 pillows. Now that the floor in this closet is clear, let's move to the wall. <laughs> Which right away, I'm seeing some items that I probably saw a few years ago and didn't want to declutter, but now in this more advanced stage of my thinking, I, I don't need these coach purses that I got, I don't know, when I was in high school maybe, in college? Although Coach is coming back, I could probably resell these for a decent chunk of change on either the Facebook Marketplace or Mercari, Mercari, however you pronounce it. I mean, they are in pretty pristine condition. <laughs> now I'm starting to question, do I wanna, do I wanna putz around with this Coach bag? Ooh, I even have some old sunglasses in here. Very early 2000s style. Oh, and my little Coach wristlet from when I used to go out in college. Comment below if you also had this same coach wristlet. I feel like this is the one every college girl had who's my age, I'm 35. All right, I do feel like I should get rid of these, but they're bringing me a lot of joy right now. I'm going to put these in the tentative pile. I kind of want to see what y'all's comments are on this. Maybe even if it's just you guys have suggestions on the best way to sell these, because at this point, are these are vintage, right? These are really, I took very good care of them because they were my most prized possessions when I was a poor college student. These are super brand new looking vintage coach purses. Okay, so TBD on these, but I can get rid of this black manly looking fanny pack. I will not use this. This is all my mom's. Definitely not gonna throw away someone else's stuff. All right. 
we're at 52 items decluttered now. Next, we're in my kid's closet. Now, this is not an area I've neglected for years by any means. I'm in here every freaking day helping my boys pick out their outfits, but obviously children grow and as they grow they grow out of clothes and in my situation my three boys all wear the exact same size and they overnight it seems have all grown out of their clothes i'm about to need to drop a fat wad of cash on brand new clothes for three boys since there's no hand-me-downs in this house everyone grows out of things unfortunately at the exact same time so as we are about to move to the size six slash seven i need to get rid of all of these size five slash six items now to make it easier i do have this that i keep on top of their dressers here and anytime they put something on and then it's very clear that it's too small for them now i have them take it off and we stick it right in here so i already know that all of these they've grown out of and i'll put these in the donate pile but i do know that there are clothes bursting out of some of these that we probably haven't even ventured down to the bottoms of these in a while and i'm assuming the bottom half of these are all grown out of. So we're gonna have to go bin through bin and pick out what still fits and what does not. Right away, already some stuff that doesn't fit. And yes, I still practice the no fold method. My kids still don't care if their stuff is wrinkly. And I feel like within a few minutes, it's unwrinkled. And if not, I have my downy wrinkle releaser. Yeah, they have grown out of a lot of this. Only a few items, only a few items left. The amount of clothes I'm getting rid of right now, we are definitely well over a hundred. I've lost track, I've lost track. We accomplished the goal, over a hundred, guaranteed. These are my boys' absolute favorite Minecraft jammies. They were from Walmart, from the brand like Cuddle Duds, but they're so soft, they feel like kicky pants, but obviously way cheaper than kicky pants, which these are kicky pants right here, and they're way too small and have a hole in them. Just keeping these. I know this seems like a lot, but keep in mind, I have three boys that all wear the same exact size. This is not like me going through one child's set of clothes, which is actually kind of convenient. You know, I only have to do this with one set of drawers and I'm taking care of it for all three of my kids. All right, we decluttered a lot of clothes from that. I mean, this is, this is over a hundred items. I can stop counting. This is well over 100 items. Now we need to move our way up and figure out what we can declutter from up here. I've started reading the first Harry Potter to my boys. So it's on the floor by their bed. The Way of the Warrior Kid. This is actually such a good book. This book is so good. My boys loved it. We're entertained by it. And I feel like it has good, solid lessons for little boys. Little girls too. But, you know, obviously I have only boys. But but it's about hard work, having good character, and persevering and ultimately becoming stronger on the other side. So honestly, it was kind of good for me to read too. Uh, as I was dating over the last year-ish, I went on some dates with this guy who was super into Brazilian jiu-jitsu and he actually recommended this book because Jocko Willink is, I guess, a jiu-jitsu guy. I'm not into jiu-jitsu, but I liked a lot of of the mindset and practices from it. And anytime I was willing to go on a date with someone, to me, the requirement is I had to find them to be at least two of these three things. Interesting, smart, funny. This guy was not funny, but he was interesting and smart. And hence why I feel like he was able to recommend some cool things that I feel like was helpful for me and my kids. Not everything's a love connection though. Anytime I even gave a guy two seconds of my time, I wanted to make sure that they were not just going to take from me because I have a bad habit of letting people just take from me. And so that is why my therapist suggested that I have some initial boundaries like that to make sure that even if all failed, I at least got something out of it. And I can definitely say that was the case. As long as I talked to someone who was at least smart, interesting, or funny, if they were smart, I could learn something. If they were interesting, I was never bored. And if they were funny, I had a good time. But yeah, 
All that to say, all of the Jocko Willink kids related books are so good for boys age probably five to ten. All right, there is a lot of stuff here, obviously. Yes, let's just start bagging it up. All of this is in pretty good condition. It can all easily be donated. And there's, I don't even fold my kids' clothes before they wear them. There's no way I'm folding this before I donate it. It's all just getting shoved in these bags. Three bags, all filled up. Next up, we got another random closet. <laughs> uh, oh, and this is where I've hid my children's iPads from them. Right away, we got some more of the crappy feather pillows that poke and stab you with the <laughs> tips of the feathers that we can get rid of. So many pillows in here. Some of them though are decorative and I just need to put them back out where they belong. This does not belong on the floor. I actually love this. This right here, is my Aurora heated jacket. Yes, I currently live in Texas. Yes, I am formerly from Minnesota. So you would think I should be happy enough with the weather here in Texas, but I left Minnesota because I am a complete weenie when it comes to cold weather. So I still got my heated jackets and I love them and I was looking for this. Now it's summer, so I'm not gonna need it for a while. I'll just hang it up downstairs, but I, freaking love this thing. I got all my infusible ink cricket shirts. Set a date on my calendar where I make them some fun shirts. Okay, we can we can walk in here again. Next we got whatever mess is going on here. See, this is the problem with having too much stuff and why I'm trying to prioritize continuing this decluttering journey because this bag that was just shoved in the corner here is full of brand new Cat and Jack clothes from Target. And unfortunately, they've been sitting in here so long that my kids have grown out of them. Donate all these brand new tag still on shirts. Oh, old family album. This should go with all my memorabilia stuff. This is my dad when he was, I don't know, probably in college. My grandma and grandpa on my dad's side. Dude, good for you, grandma. You look like a movie star. All right, moving on. I gotta put this with my memorabilia. Oh, we got this. I was sent this as PR a couple years ago. This thing is interesting. I'm going to declutter it via giving it to someone who I think could use it. But the idea behind this fair play, it was endorsed by Reese Witherspoon, is it's a book and a game to go along with it that reminds couples that are maybe struggling with workload imbalances around the house. It reminds people of all the invisible work that mostly women get straddled with. I think a very common thing in a lot of marriages, just talking to my friends, because I feel like a lot of my friends come to me asking for advice when it comes to marriage, since I guess, I don't know, people are asking the failure when it comes to marriage for marriage advice. I'm a, I'm a safe, non-judgmental person to talk to when it comes to that. So I have a lot of people asking me about it, and it seems like something a lot of couples struggle with is the woman is doing so much work in the home and and it's invisible labor that their partner does not realize they're doing. So the idea behind this is it just lets everyone know of all the invisible work, all the mental load that primarily women are taking on and it has it's created a system to help evenly divide the workload. And then even if it's maybe not perfectly evenly divided, at least hopefully their husband realizes how much their wife is doing and appreciates it. Cuz I feel like I mean Almost everyone who's come to me asking for marriage advice, the workload imbalance in the household is a huge problem, but as long as your husband's willing to work through it and recognizes all that you do and appreciates what you do, like, you can work through anything. Both people just have to do the work. All right, I got my green screen thing. I gotta keep that. All right, not perfect, but I have, you know, my basic filming stuff. My goodness, stuff accumulates so freaking fast. <laughs> this is all that I've decluttered in the video today. Whew, all right, what have we learned today? We've at least reinforced that decluttering is a lifelong journey, especially for me. If you wanna keep hanging out though, feel free to click on one of the other decluttering playlists or videos floating over the screen at this point, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.